Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is making decisions. And so we learned about the serial monitor first, so we could come back and use the serial monitor as a tool to understand what's going on when we make those decisions. Okay, um, and so what we're going to do is we'll look at some examples of how we do this and how they work. Okay, and so the key is that um, so, and we call these, what we're learning, it's like an if statement. The, uh, I think the official name for it is a conditional. And it's a pretty common feature, extremely common feature in computer science. So when, whenever you're writing code, you have to make decisions that this is how you do it. Okay? And so we want to, there's, there's a whole lot of layers to this. So I'm going to kind of start slow and work our way up. And the basic piece is an if. So we ask if something is true. So if something happens, if something happens to be true, then we can, make some certain decision decision that goes with that um and it's kind of like taking your code and 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 having it split off into two branches so you have kind of two paths or maybe just one path that comes back eventually to the original path or there's a lot of ways to look at it and we'll look at some different examples here okay and so our first thing we could do is we could say if um so if num loops is maybe greater than 10 we could print a statement that says um, there are more than 10 loops Something like that. And let's actually move this to the start. I'm going to cut and paste. So control X and then jump up here. Control V to paste. Okay. So I'm put it up here so it comes in before this statement. We'll remove the LN so it stays on the same line. Okay. And so we have this statement. It's going to print the number of loops is and then the num loops. And then it's going to, every time through the loop, it's going to look at this if statement. And if that number is greater than 10, it's going to also print this value. Now you can see that the loop, the if statement has these open and closing curly brackets, right? Just like we saw for the loop itself and the, and the, um, the setup function as well. Um, and so you, if you're not sure what loops go to you, there's, you can kind of open and close things like collapse them by pressing these arrows. And so everything between these two brackets belongs to setup. And we kind of collapse it like that, open it back up. So that if we collapse the, the if statement here, anything between those brackets belongs to that if. Okay, so we run this on the Arduino and we open up our monitor and what we'll see is we're counting up and then once we get to 10, nope, let's do it again. So it kind of resets it when we're, when we're uploading that code. So in a minute here, it's going to refresh itself. Okay, so it's counting up from right up to 10 and then once we get to 10 it's saying there's look there's more than 10 loops and so we made a decision right so we um made the decision here if these are there are more than 10 we're going to do this extra thing and that extra thing happened and there's something we can also do is we can we can make that path split and do something else in the other case so we can add what we call an else here and we could say serial dot print and say, well, there are less than 10 loops. Or we could say, really, there are 10 or less loops, right? Because it will, it will say this when there's 10. 10 or less loops. Okay, and we'll add the space there as well. Um, so we run this one, and now we're going to see that for this time, the um, so I can just click that to make it disappear. This time, it's going to say this message for the first 10 times, and then afterwards, it's going to say this one. Okay? And so we're running the code. It's taking a minute here. It's uploaded. Let's open up our monitor. And so we could say there, oh, <laughs> some bad grammar there. There are 10 or less loops, and then switch over to say there's more than 10 loops once we got to 10. Okay? And so um, I can disconnect it and go back and scroll at it so you can see. We had 10 or less, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Then we got to 10, it switched, and we started to say there are more than 10 loops, right? The number of loops is 11. There's more than 10, the number is 12. And so that if branched the code, 
And so we did one thing in this case, we did another thing in this case, and you can see in both cases, it came back around and still printed these messages. And so in the, the way the if works is we got here, we, we did like a check here. And if this was true, it did this thing. If it was false, it did this thing. And then it came back to here and continued on. Okay. Um, and let's see. Um, so there's a couple other things I want to show you. Um, for now, what we'll do is um, we'll just make another variable. This is called a, a Boolean. A Boolean is a type of variable that can just be true or false. It's specific to C++. In C, you would just use like a 0 or a 1. But we'll say Boolean um, test equals true. Okay, so this is something that can be true or false. And so what we can do here is we can we can actually contain multiple conditions in our if statement. And so if we want two things to be true, we can use something called an and, which is the two and signs. If we want one of two things to be true, we can use an or. If we want something to not be true, we can put an exclamation point in front of it. Okay. And so, um, for example, if we want to reverse this, we put this in brackets and we put the exclamation point in front of that. And what this says, if not num loops greater than 10. And so this would like flip our message that we had sent. And so this is going to now print this message at the beginning and then this one at the end saying the opposite of whatever this is. Okay. And that's what we call, um, I don't, even, I'm not sure what the name of that is. It's, I just call it not. So it's not that, um, and so here you can see it's kind of backwards. So it's saying there's 10 or more loops when there really aren't. And then it flips to say there's less than 10. And so we have it backwards here. Okay. Okay. Just looked it up and officially, I think it's just called the not operator, the not conditional or the not condition. Okay. And so we can also though say, well, if num loops is greater than 10 and test is equal to true or just test and test, right? We could say and test. And so it's going to check the value of test. If test is true, then it evaluates as true. And if it's false, then it evaluates as false. So the way this works is if both of these things are true, it's going to do this. But if only one of these things is true, it's going to do this. So for us to trigger this if statement, when we have the and operator there, then both things have to be true to trigger the if. Alternatively, if we use the or one, and this symbol here is the shift and then backslash um, just below the backspace sign, um, and there's two of them, and this is the or conditional, and so either of these can be true to trigger the if statement, okay? And so in this case, whether, if I set this to false, then it's always going to print this. Well, it's going to print this until we get to 10, and then both these evaluate to, fall, evaluate to false, and then it's not going to print anymore. Okay. If we put the and there, then it would never print. Okay. The first one would never print. So let me, let, let's actually do this to make it. Okay. So what we have here, I've, I've, I've copied over here just so that it, it can, we can get this going a little quicker for ourselves. Um, so I have this or statement. I have test set to be true. Actually, let's move it back to false. Um, the keyboard is not working here for me. Okay. Um, so I've test set to false. And so what's going to happen is greater than 10 will evaluate to false until the value gets to 10 and tests will evaluate to, uh, true or to false always. And so for the if statement to trigger, we have to have one of these be true. And so once it gets over 10, then it will evaluate to true and they'll print the message. This triggered the if statement before that it will, it will print the false. Okay. And so we look at it down here. So it's saying it's false. And then once we get over that 10, we trigger the if statement. On the other hand, if we evaluate this to true, because one of these two things is true, it will always trigger the if statement because it's never going to be false. So it's, you can see it's always triggering the if statement regardless of the value. If we change this to an and, 
then both of these have to be true. So we'll only trigger it once it gets over the value of 10. Okay. And we see that there. And then the last thing I'll show is if this is a false with the and here, both these have to be true. So since test is equal to false, it will never be true. And so it will never trigger this if statement because it will never be true. Okay, we'll always evaluate to false. Okay, and some of this stuff might be confusing. Okay, so for now, what matters is we don't have to worry about um, combining multiple uh, conditionals together or conditions together. We can just focus on one thing if it's greater than 10 or if it's not. Um, and just a note, we can also nest if statements to make additional branches. And so if we wanted to know if it was greater than 10, and then if we wanted to make another guess, like, oh, in this case, if it was, um, if um, num loops um, is equal to 15, um, we could say, um, We'll add this here. Have a special case here where we say serial dot print, and then we'll add the l in there, and we'll just put um, maybe we really like the number fifteen or something, you know. Um, also, I didn't mention this before. This is another conditional that we skipped. The double equal sign is how we check to see if these things are the same. Is using the two equals. But I know we got it right there um, on here, so we we can see that the those all those fifteens went through when it was at fifteen um, in that special case. And so this double equal sign is the um, another conditional that we have. And that's for checking to see if things are the same, okay? And this is what we call the equivalence operator. Um, I guess this would technically be the non-equivalence operator, um, I suppose. So we use the equivalence operator here when we're comparing things, whereas we use the assignment operator when we're assigning the value of something, okay? And so the reason why we don't want to use the equivalence operator here is because we're actually changing the value of num loops, okay? And this would always evaluate to true. And so we want to be very careful about that. We'll talk more about this in a future video. And then one last thing here um, that I, I that might be helpful. So we kind of showed counting up here the number of loops, and we can make decisions, etc. We can also do it so things only happen within the if statements, where we don't want anything else to happen outside of them. You know, we can have it be totally blank, um, but we do need a counter counter here. Let's see. Let's move our counter to. here okay um, and so like we can have it so it's just printing false and then once we trigger the if statement it's it's counting like it's printing this whole other message we could also just get rid of this entirely um, so it doesn't print anything in the else case um, like this and so we have just the one message printing um, and then we could also do other things like let's say that we want to um, let's say that we want to do a digital write so we can set a pin mode um, you know, we could set like say LED4 as an output and then we could um, in the case that this got triggered we could say digital write and then we can set pin 4 to high okay and we can maybe have it set to low otherwise or we could even put like a blink sequence in here whichever and that allows us just to, to maybe like trigger an LED after a certain number of loops um, there's lots of things we could do here we could also instead of counting up we can count down maybe we set our number of loops to 20 and then instead of counting up, we can also do a minus minus here to count down. We can do a minus equals one, or we can do the minus minus to count down. Okay, and this is getting a little bit long here, so I'll wrap it up here. But um, here we see it counting down, right? Um, and then it stops once it got to 10. 
because we passed that threshold. Okay, so um, there's a lot here. Hopefully it kind of makes sense. We'll continue talking about these conditionals and these different operators in future videos.